Eve, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Judah approached Joseph and said, I beg you, my Lord, let not your servant speak earnestly to my Lord, and do not become angry with your servant, for you are the equal of Pharaoh. My Lord asked your servants, have you a father or another brother? So he said to my Lord, we have an aged father and a young brother, the child of his old age. This one's full brother is dead, and since he is the only one by that mother who is left, his father dotes on him. Then you told your servants, bring him down to me that my eyes may look on him. Unless your younger, youngest brother comes back with you, you shall not come into my presence again. When we returned to your servant, our father, we reported to him the words of my Lord. Later, our father told us to come back and buy some food for the family. So we, re so we reminded him we cannot go down there. Only if our youngest brother is with us can we go. For we may not see the man if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, our father, said to us, As you know, my wife bore me two sons. One of them, however, disappeared, and I had to conclude that he must have been torn to pieces by wild beasts. I have not seen him since. If you now take this one away from me, too, and some disaster befalls him, you will send my white head down to the nether world in grief. Joseph could, hold, could no longer control himself in the presence of all his attendants, so he cried out, have everyone withdraw from me. Thus, no one else was about when he made himself known to his brothers. But his sobs were so loud that the Egyptians heard him, and so the news reached Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still in good health? 
but his brothers could give him no answer, so dumbfounded were they at him. Come closer to me, he told his brothers. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you once sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed, and do not reproach yourselves for having sold me here. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God sent me here ahead of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember Remember the the marvels the Lord Lord has has done. done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of his possessions. Remember Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals, or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it, and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, Go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Words taken from today's Holy Gospel. In his ministry, our Lord referred to the kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven, frequently. In this day and age, we lack a sense of the concrete character which the term kingdom, or kingdom of heaven, suggested to the minds of our Lord's audience. Their entire life experience was set against the backdrop of the rise and fall of kingdoms. And so the announcement of a kingdom's imminent arrival, depending on one's attitude, could arouse either great anticipation or anxiety. 
Recall Herod's reaction compared to that of the Magi arriving from the east to pay homage to the newborn king. Or Pontius Pilate anxiously asking our Lord if he were a king, but seeming to relax when told that he was, but his kingdom was not of this world. As scripture had foretold long before, when God's kingdom finally came, it would never end. We find mention of this as far back as Abraham, and now our Lord announces that it was at hand. In our gospel, he sends out the 12 to proclaim this good news everywhere. The miracles and exorcisms they would perform were to be heralds of the joyous and blessed character of this kingdom. This was necessary because the claims of kingdoms were so familiar, there was a danger the people and even the apostles themselves would assume this kingdom, like the rest, was just yet another promise of political freedom rather than a spiritual freedom. Despite the possible confusion, it was, nevertheless, a true and tangible kingdom that would eventually conquer and replace all others. God's kingdom is tangible in that it has a king, the person of Jesus, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit. What's unusual about this kingdom is that one becomes a citizen of it, not through birth or filling out an application, but primarily through belief. Belief in the Son of God, believing what he revealed about his church, and believing going on to be baptized into her. The kingdom also has a very definite character. Some parts are localized and can be seen. It has an outward form. It can be pointed to. It has its governing body, its hierarchy, and a clearly defined life, which predominantly subsists in the visible church, though not entirely. Our Lord himself is its invisible head and sustains her. His 12 apostles act as its foundational stones, particularly the chief apostle Peter and his successors. It was this man who was appointed to be the church's visible rock and hold the keys of entry. Additionally, abiding within this distinct and identifiable kingdom is the enduring presence of our Eucharistic Lord. By being joined to him through the life of the church, we are made citizens of the kingdom and receive our vocation to be transformed into his likeness. Although tangible, the kingdom is impervious to physical destruction due to the invisible bonds through which it functions. It is a union of hearts, a network of prayer, a web of charity, which is unaffected by attacks, censorship, persecution, or even death. The life of the kingdom is our connection to the communion of saints, facilitated by the Holy Spirit. This is essentially the life of grace, and it is the gift we were given as a result of our Lord's redemptive sacrifice. Let us pray that we could recover the ancient sense of the full reality of the kingdom of God. May we cooperate with his mission of working a great transformation among those who become its citizens, that we could experience it as a foretaste and promise of heaven. We bring our prayers to the Father, who is the giver of all good gifts. 
for the church. May the Holy Spirit guide all believers toward loving one another with perfect love. Let us pray to the Lord. For public authorities, may God help them govern justly and to promote peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer the violation of basic human rights and for those working to bring them comfort and assistance, let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, may they rest in peace especially for Pedro and Audila Noguez, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, please listen and respond to our prayers according to your will and through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too exalt, extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.